guys, Tom Vice So One, and well, I thought I'd take you along for an insane arena match. Uh, this is I th at the time the only match I have played this season in arena, and after it, I was like, you know what? There's no top in this. We'll we'll take our you know top twenty five percent. We'll we'll help pad the numbers down below so that more people can get into the upper tiers. We'll we'll just take this game, walk and leave. But uh, we have a very exciting game. It is a bit of a weird one, as it's 2v2v2v2, but it will be an exciting one. Uh, as you can see, teams are evenly matched, as you'd expect in Arena. Everyone is out in a cruiser or a destroyer. I am the only Des Moines. Uh, everyone else rocking that Alaska. And then as far as destroyers go, I think their gearings and cab rosks plenty. Cool. Great. Uh, what are we going to do? Well, uh, we spawn on this side with cover, and that's what I want to take advantage of. Cover, first and foremost, and then we also have this uh, this reload booster that spawns right in front of us. So uh, our plan, we're going to kind of sneak around this way. The good news is we have we out-conceal every single cruiser, right? A lot of the other cruisers, they or all the other cruisers, are Alaska's. Um, they're air quotes, super cruisers or essentially mini battleships. Uh, so their concealment, not exactly their strong suit. So if we can, uh, we can use that to our advantage, we should be able to outspot them. We won't be able to outspot the destroyers, but where we are playing, um, the sight lines in which we are, uh, engaging in, we should be pretty well off because if a destroyer kind of pops out from near those islands at this point. Uh, our radar should be able to handle them. They should be within nine kilometers. We should be all set. Cool. Great. Our teammate, though, has decided that rushing for the other uh, the other reload booster is the best plan. You can see we're trying to come out here and support him while also just trying to kiss the outline of that reload booster. Because um, generally what it is is like the second you touch the, the outline of that reload booster that's when you're able to safely engage, or that's when you're able to pick up that that power-up. So we're gonna go ahead, um, we picked it up. Now that he, our, our destroyer isn't really spotting the other gearing anymore, we're like, okay, we can reset, we can turn around, um, and then we can begin to try to engage this Alaska. As he takes, uh, you know, we get one shot in, but more importantly, our destroyer goes down to the flood of enemy torpedoes because I think he was just chilling in his smoke. It is what it is. So we are now a team of one versus six other people. And, uh, well, how are we going to win this situation? I think we have to start analyzing our first, my first gut instinct is to use these islands, right? We want the cover. We want the concealment. We want to be able to en control engagements and more importantly, control the angles at which those engagements are occurring. So we know there is an enemy uh, battleship, or we, there's an enemy cruiser. Um, we know where that Alaska is. Um, we want to be able to control um, the distance through there. We go ahead. We tapped on our brakes right there. Part of that is well, he wouldn't. The gearing wouldn't have. Uh, the gearing wouldn't have torpedoes back up but you can always kind of do this sort of slow down as a torpedo measure my goal my idea was let's see if this gearing is brave enough to try to like push in towards us um and you know try to close the distance to get ready for a torpedo attack and if he does take those few beats let him get a little bit closer when he gets a little bit closer we'll be able to pop the sonar we'll be able to keep an eye on him um that's of course, didn't really happen right there, but we are still going to keep that sonar on, sonar on just in case uh, that enemy gearing has decided to, what I like to call hermit crabbing, i.e. Uh, killing killing another DD that's laid a smoke screen and then using that smoke screen as their new home, you know, kind of getting that free concealment. Um, so we have the sonar going just in case. So I wasn't sure exactly where he was. Um, but now we're going to go ahead and try to use this island that's off just to our starboard, off to the right-hand side, as the cover to begin to engage the Alaskan. The reason we're doing that is in a one-on-one -on -one fight, we should eke out over the Alaska fairly easily. And the reason for that is we have a, a far higher DPM, and we have 
enough armor that his bigger guns aren't going to matter. By that, I mean, if he wants to shoot AP at us, we're just going to shrug it off. If he wants to shoot HE at us, it's going to, you know, it's going to start to hurt. But uh, we have a lot higher of a fire rate. And that means we should be able to uh, win out in a 1v1. Uh, while all this was going on, <laughs> our actually the enemy uh, gearing from this this red team decided that he would uh, kind of shove off, and uh, he ended up getting sunk. But as this is all playing out, there's something else we need to be concerned about, and that is um, the team that is capturing uh, the base at this moment because we don't want this to end quite yet. We're not we're not ready to for this to all go down. So we saw that we out concealed that uh, that Alaska as we were coming into this area. We're gonna pick him up right here. See, his guns aren't concentrated on us. We're going to go ahead, let some shells fly down his direction. Uh, we'll go ahead, blind fire just a little. And the idea of this is we just want to reset him. We want to buy ourselves a little bit more time. Yes, we are broadside to him, but we do we should have the speed where we kind of came out, got our shots off, and now we can turn um, our attention back to the Alaska that we were dealing with uh, at the beginning of this. Um, and hopefully we've bought enough time to where now another team can start dealing with the the ships that are in the middle that that yellow the yellow team the orange team not going to be the or, or hopefully they're able to begin uh, entering the cap and dealing with him as we turn our attention back to the alaska that we were dealing with earlier we see we got a couple of good salvos off with the uh ap as he was making that turn he's back nose in with us that's fine by us we're going to go ahead and continue then flip over to that he See if we can get a fire to burn. See if we can get a couple of shells to start landing. Uh, and we are just going to kind of slug it out here. Because that's our only real option we have here. We have um, that island off to our right-hand side to protect us from what is the rest of the teams. Right? We've isolated this engagement off to essentially our spawn. Which is okay. It is what it is. We go ahead and pop the, the repair party. I was thinking we would be able to sink him by the time he, got, he gets another salvo off. Of course... Um, our luck, we, we get a couple of uh, unfortunate shatters and he's able to get one more salvo off. And of course, in the laws of the world, uh, he is he is going to be able, actually, I think two more salvos. He's going to basically get us on a double fire, which is going to end up hurting us real bad as he kind of understands that he is going down and will not be winning this engagement at this point. And uh, well... That's him dealt with. That's finally one team down. We we get we get we get him a lot more salvos than I was actually expecting. Uh, as we take a fairly massive hit there, which means we now now have uh, ten thousand health and falling in order to finish off the game. Good news, we still have both of our radars. Though for the amount of time that's left over in this game, we can probably realistically only think about using one. And the other good news, we have our sonar back, so we're looking. We're looking pretty good. Uh, enemy Alaska that was capping is in, in the full retreat. And, well, we need to be able to start to engage him. Um, the idea that we want to go for here, we want to start controlling the engagement of the cap. There's only one destroyer left. Um, he's currently within our radar. That's okay. Um, but if we can see kind of where he's sitting right now, we should be able to pick him up on sonar if we start to get into the cap. And luckily for us, Alaska that we are shooting at right now is sort of in the Mexican standoff. He can either choose to angle towards us or ch towards another Alaska. And it's kind of uh, damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. Uh, you saw we saw previously we have plenty of uh, we have plenty of DPM to kind of uh, wear down enemy ships like this but uh this alaska seems to be taking a beating from his from the other from the other alaska but uh cab right here trying to get off some cheeky torps that's fine by us we will happily take the couple of free salvos to uh engage him we can see we're getting some pretty good hits that that uh that last salvo unfortunately though cab having that uh incredibly strong armored uh side plate uh, means that we actually ended up shattering a good number of those shelves. We still have a minute left on our sonar, which is perfect for us. We dodged that first set of torps. He's backing up. We know that usually means uh, he's he's he wants to either A, send out a second set of torps like he is right here, um, which is good news for us because I believe that is all of his torpedoes. So we now have a clear reign to come in 
at full speed and take out this Kabarosk. Um, he's not going to be able to run away from our sonar distance, even if he's within smoke. Um, if he goes ahead and deploys it, we can see enemy Alaska uh, is, is starting to get weak. We prioritize the orange Alaska just because he's gonna be the one that we're gonna have to end this all with. And as we come around the corner, we can see we one pick up the high caliber, but Kabarosk pops out right there. We'll go ahead, finish him off with the AP. And while we are looking away, uh, orange Alaska ends up getting a die hard. Die hard is when you ram someone or someone rams you and you survive uh, the way he accomplished that. If you've never survived a ram before is part of ramming damage is dealt with your speed by being in reverse. He reduces that, uh, that Delta. And uh, as we do that, we fire some AP, finish him off and pick up the solo warrior for this fun little arena match. I think we end up with like 4,000 XP. So <laughs> very fun match. And guys, if you like the video, go ahead, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. See ya.